let's go to the second of our two-part lecture. This one is the Laplace transforms of the derivatives. The Laplace of the nth order derivative of y is simply the nth power of s times function y s minus n minus one power of s y of zero minus, you'll notice that the power of s decreases. Pero the power of y of zero, the order increases it from y sub zero or y of zero, it becomes the first derivative, it becomes so um second derivative, and so on until it ends at the n minus one derivative. The first derivative of the function of t is simply s times function of y minus y sub zero. For the second, it's s squared, and then function of y minus you uh, decrease the power of s, but increase the powers of y. But you start with y sub zero, so s times y sub zero. But here, there's no more s to write because it's s1, but you increase the order of the derivative. So example, guys, here, sixth uh, order derivative. So that's s to the sixth times ys. The first is always a ys. And then you subtract one power, and then it becomes a y sub zero. Subtract one more power, it becomes y prime. Subtract one more, and then this becomes y double prime, and so on. Until you end up without, without an s, but then with the n minus one order of derivative. So for example, number one, it's a second uh, second derivative. So that is basically s squared y of s minus s y of zero minus, there's no more s to write, so it becomes y prime of zero. And then we end here. How do we know that we will end with this? Because here, um, it's always one degree less than the der given derivative. And then you can see there that there is plus a squared y. So let's just write a squared. The y becomes y of s. Again, let's look at this. The derivative. So six derivative of y of s, fifth derivative of y of zero, and so on. So the y there is just y of s because it's not a derivative. Okay, and then let's equate that to zero. Looking at the initial conditions, y of zero is equal to one. So I can see that this one is simply one. y prime of zero is equal to zero. So that is zero. So what do I end up with? Basically, what we have is an s squared y of s minus s plus a squared y of s is equal to zero. So let's try to factor out those y of s's. y of s, s squared plus a squared minus s is equal to zero. So if I factor out the y of s, that's simply s over s squared plus a squared. Isn't this familiar to us, guys? What is the inverse Laplace of this y of s, guys. This is cosine of a t. So that's how it was derived, those things. Let's try another one. You have a second derivative, you have a first derivative, and then you have a y. So let's try this. Okay, for the first one, it is s squared y of s all the time. The first one is with y of s minus s y of zero. And then again, minus, there's no more s, but it becomes a y prime of zero. So I'll stop here. Next, there's a minus three. That's, that's a prime. So I can see that's s y of s minus, there's no more s, but it becomes a y of zero. 
and then plus 2, it's not a derivative. So that just becomes y of s. And then this one, you have to remember, that's e to the 3t. Isn't it that I taught you how to get the Laplace of this? Because we want to get everything in terms of s. What is the Laplace of e to the 3t? 1 over s minus 3. And then now let's apply the initial conditions. y of 0 is 0. So this one whole thing is 0. y prime becomes 0. That is 0. So that means if I simplify this, s squared y of s minus 3s y of s plus 2y of s is equal to 1 over s minus 3. So if I factor out all the y of s, I'll end up with s squared 3s plus 2, 1 over s minus 3. And then y of s is actually 1 over all those. This one is actually, if I factor out this one, that's actually s minus 1 and s minus 2. And then you have another one, s minus 3. So some of you might ask, how do we solve something like this? You have to remember, you can always use the partial fractions. So using the partial fractions, 1 all over s minus 1, s minus 2, s minus 3 is actually equal to a over s minus 1 plus b over s minus 2 plus c over s minus 3. And then if we multiply everything by the LCD, 1 is equal to a s minus 2 and s minus 3. b, s minus 1 and s minus 3. And then lastly, c, s minus 1, s minus 2. So if s is equal to 1, that becomes negative 1, negative 2. And then this one cancels out because there's an S minus 1, S minus 1. So you can already solve A is 1 half. If S is equal to 2, that means 1 equals A cancels out. And then B doesn't cancel. 2 minus 1 is 1. 2 minus 3 is negative 1. Therefore, B is negative 1. And lastly, if S is equal to 3, a cancels out, B cancels out, C doesn't cancel. 2 times 1, your C is positive, 1 half. So basically, your Y of S can be written as 1 half over S minus 1 minus 1 over S minus 2 plus 1 half over S minus 3. Guys, can you give me the y of t? 1 over 2 e raised to 1. I'm a t. Minus e raised to 2t. Plus 1 half times e raised to 3t. That's your final answer. So... That means you use the derivatives and then we made them this one. So um, because more often than not, you will be given initial value conditions just like these. You see there, second derivative. So S squared, Y of S minus S, Y of zero. And then another step, the S vanishes. It becomes Y prime of zero. And then there's uh, the y. That just becomes y of s because it's not a y prime. Okay. So let's apply the initial conditions. The y of 0 is 0. So the whole thing becomes 0. y prime of 0 becomes 2. So this one is actually 2. So let's simplify. s squared y of s minus 2 
plus y of s is equal to zero. So let's factor out y of s. Sorry. So y of s, and then we're left with s squared plus one is equal to two. Therefore, y of s is actually two all over s squared plus one. Can you give me the y of t? Two sine of t. Two sine of t. That's it. So again, let's try one last item. Item number four. Oh, it's x instead of y. So what will it be, guys? S squared. X of s minus s x of zero minus x prime of zero plus two. It's a prime. So that means s x of s minus x of zero because um, you remove one s and then it becomes an x of zero. Take note that the first is always something of s and then something of zero. Plus, this is not a derivative, the x. It's simply x of s. Now, look at this one. 3t e to the negative t. Everything has already been transformed as functions of s. So that means this one should be written as 3 over, that's just t, something squared. But then there's an e, so there's shifting. That's s plus 1, right? So if we can recall, f of t and f of s. If t, f of t is t, what's f of s, guys? 1 over, isn't it 1 over s squared? But then there's shifting. All right. Let's try to apply and cancel what we can cancel. So x sub 0 is actually equal to 4. X prime of zero is actually equal to two. This is four. Okay. This is S squared. X of S minus four S minus two plus two S X of S minus eight plus X of S is equal to three over S plus one quantity squared. And then let's factor out the x of s. I'm left with s squared minus, uh, plus 2s plus 1. And then the others can be transformed or transposed, sorry, can be transposed to the other side. So I can move 4s in here. I can move the 2 in here. I can move the 8 in here. Because it doesn't contain x of s, I can't factor it out. Right? Okay, this one, take note, guys, that this one, what will this be? Isn't this s plus 1 quantity squared? Therefore, if I factor out the x of s, this one would be 3 over s plus 1 to the fourth power because that's squared and then this is squared. And then plus 4s all over s plus 1 quantity squared. Plus I can say that this one is simply 10 over s plus 1 quantity squared. So the first one, we don't have a problem. The second one, we have a bit of a problem because there is shifting in the second term. So what we do here is, if I would add a 1 in here, how does it affect the constant, guys? I'll erase it a bit, so I'll, I'll write it a bit better. Originally, you notice that it's just for S. However, you'll notice that, I'll use a different ink. In order to make them the same, you know, the shifting, 
I make it S plus 1. But how will it affect the constant? What did I add by doing this? 4. I added a 4. So in order to remove the effect of the 4, I have to subtract another 4. So that means the new equation would be, this one is still the same. It's 3. S plus 1 to the 4. No problem with that. This one is 4 over S plus 1 because the S plus 1 and S plus 1 cancels out. Here, it becomes 6 over S plus 1 squared. So, applying, applying the concepts that we have learned, T raised to N is N factorial all over S to the N plus 1. What will be the first one? What's the N in here, guys? N is 3. So that means I need a 3 factorial. Am I correct? I need to remove a 1 over 3 factorial. Can you help me with the first one? So on top, it's 3 over 6. And then this one will be what? In terms of T, guys, isn't this t to the third power, e to the negative t, because they're shifting. The second one, guys, help me, please. Or e raised to negative t. Very good. The third one. 60 e raised to negative t. So that means it's one half t to the third power, e to the negative t, plus 4e to the negative t, plus 60e to the negative t. Very good. That's the x of t.